Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette, this is Board Game Inquisition and this is the place where we love giving you insights and information about the board games you might just want to have in your own collection. So this review is a particularly special one because it probably should have come a long time ago because this game is definitely one of my favourite Euro games. So here's five things I think you need to know about Keyflower. Keyflower is a game about building a growing town through four seasons. On your turn, you'll bid for tiles to create your village by using coloured meeples. Remembering that whatever colour you bid with is the only colour that can be used to bid on that tile. You can also use the actions available on the tiles laid out for bidding, as well as the ones placed in your village. As the seasons change, more tiles and meeples will become available. And the winner is the person after the four seasons who has the most gold value from their tiles. Thing one, what's this game all about? Well, Keyflower is definitely kind of a city building slash village building game, um, which is played over four seasons. And in three of those, new villagers are gonna arrive to your town to kind of come and live and work there. Now, theme wise, I don't think even the game itself believes it has a theme, it's particularly thin. And while the game is called Keyflower and there are a number of people who arrive on boats, it definitely doesn't connect itself to the historical boat, the Mayflower in any way, but it kind of feels appropriate without it being overtly said. Um, now, normally I'm not, I don't mind if a game has a ton of theme or not, as long as the mechanics function accurately. Um, but I do feel that if you wanted some theme, you would definitely not find a lot of it here. This game is entirely mechanical. Um, now, when it comes to similar titles, um, it took me a while actually to think of something because this, this game is definitely rather on the unique side. But if I had to match it to something, I'd probably suggest something like Suburbia, in which you are bidding for tiles and and placing them in your village or city um, and then being able to activate them at a later date to help you you know further build your city. Thing two, mechanics. In my mind Keyflower has a lot of pretty special features. Um, so we'll start by talking about how you acquire tiles for your village in the first place and this is done through the bidding mechanic. Now normally bidding doesn't work very well at two player, um, but it's really exceptionally good here. And this is because of well the way you bid and how you use those colored meeples. Because when you bid, you bid with a particular colored meeple. And if your opponent wants to try and outbid you on a tile, they have to play double the number of meeples you played and in the same color. And because you don't really get to determine what color your meeples are, um, this makes for some really interesting bidding. And it also changes kind of the value of your meeples in your own eyes in, in, based on what you're capable of doing with them. Um, now, not only that, but the tiles you're bidding on, you can also use by placing meeples on them, um, which I think is really, really clever. And if you want to activate a tile multiple times, you're going to have to keep paying the cost of meeples and they all have to be of the same color. Um, and if for whatever reason you don't win a tile you bid on, well, it does, you know, it has been known to happen, you can actually use your opponent's tiles in their village. They're not entirely, you know, their own. Um, and that makes for some interesting types of player interaction. Because yes, they may have beaten you to a specific tile, but you can get there first to use it. And then you may get to determine what color meeples your opponent needs to have to be able to activate their, activate their tile themselves. Um, so you can see how this is kind of an interesting kind of play on things. I'm not sure how comfortable I am that other people could use the tiles in my village, um, but I do think it's actually really interesting and quite fun. Um, the final point that I think is really clever here is that the game is played over four seasons and in each season a new ship arrives and new tiles arrive for you to add to your village. In winter, however, you place the winter tiles and interestingly enough, you get these at the start of the game and these are all kind of end game scoring conditions. So you'll know your own end game scoring tiles um, from the start of the game so you can work towards those, but not everybody else. And of course, you'll have to bid for those tiles just like you do in every other round. So even if if you've been working towards something you know for many turns um, it doesn't necessarily mean you'll be able to score it without putting up a bit of a fight and so this bidding mechanic is really what pulls the whole game together and I love these use of the colored meeples um, to allow for different types of activations and all sorts of interesting problems 
Um, I really, really love how Key Flower is put together. Um, it's really robust. It's very satisfying to play. And it has all the hallmarks of a really great Euro game. Thing three, so what's this game like on the table? Well, Keyflower is pretty unassuming when you look at it. It's a bunch of hexagonal tiles, nicely coloured, um, but those bright meeples are quite eye-catching. Setup is really straightforward, um, and the rulebook for this game is very, very good and solid and answered any questions we have. Um, it takes about 50 minutes for two of us to play, um, 90 minutes um, for three, and of course, even more, the more players you add. Um, and be warned that this is the game that will kind of bring out um, those who suffer from analysis paralysis. There's definitely a lot of little decisions going on here that seem to bog people down. Um, the replayability in Keyflower really comes from the variety of these tiles you draw, but not just that, but how you bid for them, how you construct your villages, and then of course those winter tiles as well, change it up every time. This game will always feel familiar, but definitely fresh. Think 4. How does this game look and feel? Well, Keyflower is definitely unassuming. Its artwork is clean and tidy and fits the style of the game but I don't think it's gonna blow your socks off. And I don't think it's the kind of game that you would just pull down off of a shelf in a store either. It just doesn't stand out in that kind of way. However, the components in this are beautifully put together and I feel like the game is one that's full of tiny little touches. So for example, each player gets a player screen to hide their meeples behind and each one is a different inside of a house. So for those of you who have played Keyflower before, which one do you choose? I love the one with the dog. Um, I'd love to hear from you about which is your favourite Keyflower house. Um, on a whole, I think the game is nicely put together and it's definitely very charming. Thing five, is this game actually any good? Well, right out of the gate, I really, really loved Keyflower. It just ticks all of those dry Euro boxes for me, um, where it's fun and it's engaging um, and it's got really great mechanics to back everything up with. Um, the first thing I suppose I want to point out about this game, and I'm not sure I've heard it mentioned before, but I find Keyflower to be incredibly playful. And oddly enough, you get this in how the player interaction works. Um, there's something interesting about how you bid with your meeples and your opponent has to bid. There's a back and forth there. And even if you lose the bid, you get to have your meeples back, which I think is a, a nice consolation prize. And on top of that, even if you don't get the tile you want, you can use it at a later date and also perhaps even prevent your opponent from using it. Um, I really enjoy this back and forth and it definitely gives the game a very kind of light and fun vibe despite being perhaps a, a little bit vicious at the same time. It's like all these pods and brokes without a poke, without a declaration of, of all out war necessarily. And I like that the game flirts with that idea. I think it really lightens it up a lot. Um, the other thing, of course, that's amazing here is these coloured meeples um, and the way they're used. It's just so ingenious and so fun. Um, and you'll find yourself trying to figure out ways to maximise the number of a specific colour meeple you have or trying to get more of a particular colour um, just so you can use more things more often. I think it's a very unusual way to kind of do work or placement. Um, and it's one I think that's really, really interesting. Um, so finally, I suppose is, well, those of you who like city building will know just there's something fun about building a village. Um, I love that you add to this each round um, and none of that you can upgrade the pieces in your village too, which I think is really, really nice. So everything can become victory points. And every round there's something new to add in there, something new to use, a new place for your meeples to go or new ways to kind of combo into further things. Um, you know, city building is its own delight. Um, but the village building here I think is really really nice indeed. Um, do I have any complaints about Keyflower? Um, I don't. I think it's really just such a wonderful wonderful game. Yes it's absolutely lacking in theme but I don't think I'd have it any other way um, and this game has plenty going on without feeling complicated. It's one of the more chill games I have to play. So if you haven't checked out Keyflower yet you, what are you waiting for? You're missing out. Do I think you should have Keyflower in your collection? Well, obviously, yes. Yes, I think you should have it in your collection, um, especially if anything I said to you has kind of piqued your interest. Um, go look it up, check it out and see what you think. You've been watching Board Game Inquisition. Why not like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my future videos and I do make more videos. 
or if you've got any comments or queries you'd like to make about the wonderful he flower please just check them off in the comment box below and tune in again next time for some short and informative board game reviews